Welcome to this tutorial. Uh, this one, it's a, just a basic getting around blender. Uh, at the moment we're just going to use 2.69 even though there is a 7.1a I think out at the moment, but this one is useful. Basically it's a very, if you click on here, it's a fully fledged 3D program. Very advanced and, and very useful. People are using it professionally and making movies and all sorts with it. It's very, very capable. This is the whole world that I am not going to delve into yet, but you can even integrate 3D into your 2D uh, video. I'm particularly interested in the video side of things at the moment in the chroma keying and special effects that way, but we'll get into that as we advance. That's very advanced. You can uh, like move your objects and all that sort of thing. We basically have here up the top, every single um, window here has different applications and every window, like there's a window over here, a window here, a window down here and a window here. So, and there's even one up at the top. You can resize these and you can see each window has at the bottom or top a row of buttons that are pertinent to that video uh, to that window and it has side panels and if you click on that little plus sign you can open and close those with all the different parameters similarly here you can open and close those with that window each of the windows you can can be divided see there's a little triangle in the corner if you click on that and drag it it makes a new window and if you want to get rid of that window if I would another one like this you get one within another window and you click on it and drag it back until it turns to an arrow and that dark color and bing, it will disappear. So you can divide and reshape and change your whole layout as you feel fit. Uh, up here we have some defaults for the windows. You can have a for doing 3D views, doing animation view which and there are the windows which will be useful for that the compositing one for do, useful for doing compositing um, ga for gaming where you have logic editors and all sorts of things like that motion tracking and all graphs and things you will need there some scripting which I am not even going to consider at the moment this is for painting textures and UV maps for your 3D worlds and things and for video editing there's a fully blown editor sequencer with your window here and graphs as well. We will just go back to the default one which is the one that we had just now. And everything is scalable. Also each of those windows, those default layouts are all there. Down in this each window there's a button on every window which gives you the option of if you click it going to another one of these windows. For example we have a movie clip editor here. If we go and click again you have a node editor or you can have a um, an outliner which is in a 3D world, all the things in your 3D world. You can go to your video sequence editor here and in those buttons you have things like adding and views and what you're going to have. You'll eventually start to find your way around quite well. There's a dope sheet for uh, doing points uh, or a um, keyframes and things. So let's go back to uh, your movie clip editor. So over here at the on this side here, for example, if I want my render output, I can just go to a UV editor and I have a window for uh, for rendering. Now the properties uh, you you have a time. This one down here is a timeline one where you're going to be doing your timelining with the start points, the end points and also where you are actually in your controls if your computer is fast enough to run video that way. If there's a little minus button on each of these things that can make more or less buttons that you want to use. One that you will need to know uh, something about is your properties box here. All these buttons here are to do with mostly 3D worlds. This is for your scene, those are uh, or for rendering your scene, your worlds and textures and things and they have different parameters each one in your properties for doing all sorts of things mostly in the 3D world like texturizing and stuff. We won't worry about those for the moment. Just getting started with video will use this camera one which is your render options. You can either render here and it will render an object 
whatever is uh, needed to be rendered, and you can animate a video or a sequence or play it with that button here. And in each of these, you will have a little triangle that will open different parameters, like this, the resolution and size of your uh, your video, frame rates, and all of that sort of thing, aspect ratios of your pixels, and other things. There's all these ones here are to do with uh, like shading of 3D, whether you're having shadows cast and all those sorts of things, we won't worry about those for now. And there's just one here, post-processing. If your output can be from your compositor or your video sequencer, whichever you choose, or both, and by default it goes to the sequencer. So if we're working just, if you have a video in your sequencer and one in your composite and you have them both ticked, it will render the sequencer out in preference to your composite. So either don't have any videos in your sequencer when you're in, when you're compositing, or untick that so that your composite will feed out composite. And down below, right at the bottom, is your output, where you're going to put it, and what formats you're going, file formats of image sequences or videos, and compression there. So it's not it, it, at first look it looks very scary. There's your 3D view in the default view. And this one here would be your outliner there, and that's how your view would generally open up looking. So don't be scared by it. You will start to get you to find your way around, and in the next tutorials, I'll take you through the appropriate windows to do the appropriate jobs, particularly starting with the video and that sort of thing. Next one, I think, will be preparing our footage for our video editing and special effects.